Stop pretending like it's impossible to climb in solo queue as a support player. For this video, I am focusing on Overwatch, but this also applies to other games with a support category, so League of Legends, Paladins, uh, Dead Game Heroes of the Storm, all those other games that have support characters. But recently in Overwatch, I've been hearing a lot of comments relating to the fact that it's too difficult to climb on supports in solo queue. This comment is often followed by, that's the reason I can't get out of platinum anymore, or something along those lines. I've heard this in various streams, seen posts on the Overwatch forums about supports like Mercy in particular not having enough impact to win games. Don't get me wrong, I think a large portion of the Overwatch community does understand that it is possible to climb on supports, especially those truly looking to improve in the game. However, there is also another portion of the community that truly believes from the bottom of their heart that the reason they're stuck in low silver is because climbing on supports in solo queue is not possible. I do want to refrain from any naming of particular streamers or content creators here since I think a lot of these sorts of sentiments come down to the egotism that all of us have within us. Streamers that at one point peaked 4200 are now hard stuck in 2700. I tried to catch streams of these players as much as possible to see what might have gone wrong, since solo queue coaching and ranked player skill changes in general sort of intrigue me. But the main problem I see with these individuals is that when they make a mistake or someone offers them some advice in chat, it's like you've just insulted their mother with the most heinous words spoken in all of modern history. Mercy's skill stealing is platinum, so who the hell are you to say I played badly on that point? You're such an idiot. Well, okay, Mrs. Streamer, whose name I will not name. Or, the reason I'm in gold now is because it's very challenging to play support in solo queue, and you can't really do anything to impact the game. My teams are always hard feeding and trolling when I only died seven times, so it's not exactly my fault, lol. Or, I use my transcendence ult perfectly, yet we still couldn't win. My teams always suck so bad, I don't know why I bother. Supports can't do anything in this game. All of these are recent statements that I've heard, and some people listening to those would go, yeah, Exactly! That's exactly what it feels like to me. Supports can't win games in solo queue. God, I wish Blizzard would stop listening to pro players and finally balance for lower tiers. Let's be honest, it feels much simpler to carry on DPS characters, since a lot of the time you just click the head, lol. Most of the tanks in the game feel like pseudo DPS characters at times too. But the truth is, Almost all of the supports in the game can also be played in a very DPS-esque style as well. I mean, you have support players in top 10 in Korea constantly. You have those compilation videos of GM top 500 support players absolutely killing it, and they have obviously climbed much more than 99% of the player base ever will. These players all have their giga air quotes, pop-off moments, regardless of their role or character. But then lower tier players tend to fall into the mindset that, oh, well I have to be so insanely good at support to be able to climb with it that I have to play like Jay Jonak. That's just unreasonable and proves that supports can't climb in lower tiers. So the problem with this mentality is simple. You're not playing against top 500 DPS tank and support players, in diamond games. Simply staying alive and ulting at the relatively correct times is enough to get you out of the lower tiers, so gold and below-ish, and playing your characters mechanically better than those around you is enough to climb into GM on almost any character. But here, I am going to throw in my own experience a little bit because I feel like a lot of people playing supports could be struggling to climb for this reason, or something similar. When I finally stopped playing Paladins and came back to Overwatch for the first time in over a year, as soon as I placed I got 
put straight back into master and GM ranked games. To be honest, I did not feel like I was good enough for these ratings, so I'm glad that I got to decay all the way down to 3000, so I felt like I could actually get back into the game again gradually. However, since I wasn't familiar with all the character reworks, new characters introduced, and just in general needed to get back into the flow of Overwatch, I tried to play support as if I was a walking heal bot. This was also a sort of test to see if it would be possible to gain SR while purely heal botting and supporting my teams because, well, I trusted them more than I trusted myself. After about 30 games of solo queue only ranked, my win rate was about 50%, and lots of games felt completely unwinnable, as if I was playing the role and the way I decided as best as I possibly could, and it was having absolutely zero effect. I played another 20 support rank games, and nothing changed. Obviously, this was not working if I wanted to actually start trying to climb, so I scrapped the idea of heelbotting my teams entirely. My playstyle and everything about how I was playing before, I changed it. At all times, I was actively thinking about this. Rather than heelbotting, we were going to position in a much more aggressive location and start to worry about putting pressure on the enemy team ourselves. Instead of throwing out 95% heal orbs on Moira, suddenly it became more like 20% heal orbs to 80% damage orbs. Rather than reactionarily using ultimates, we pressed Q first. I genuinely didn't think it would have as much of an impact as it did, since by the end of the season, we'd gone from being stuck in 3000 for 50 games, to climbing up to 3800 SR within just under two weeks, after letting the account decay even more in between. Sorry. This was as someone that still to this day has never used a mic in competitive Overwatch. So, scroll wheel messages and text chat only. Obviously, my personal experience is anecdotal and not everybody is going to have the same exact experience that I did, but I think the idea could apply to everyone. Rather than constantly complaining that your team suck and you have no impact, why don't you force yourself to have impact. There's no rule book of Overwatch telling you that you can only play Lucio to boot people, or that you can only play Anna for healing. Maybe your playstyle that you stuck with for two years just doesn't work anymore. This is a common thing with Mercy players in particular at the moment from what I've seen. Some still play her in the same way that she used to be played before her major rework, and expect the character to work just as well, or the same as it would before. Same thing happened with Lucio when he got his rework back in like what, season 3, season 4? Lucio changed from being almost like a main healer, to being primarily used for everything but his healing output. I really do believe that most support players fall into this trap that they're a support, therefore they should be focusing on allowing their teammates to carry the game for them if they do their own job well. Unfortunately, ranked really is a strange place, and even if you can win games by simply allowing your team to do the dirty work for you, you're not going to climb anywhere near as easily, nor will you be improving mechanically on your characters as much on average. Just some of the things off the top of my head that can take a ton of finesse on supports to perfect would be hitting consistent sleep darts on flankers that would one-shot you, one-shotting enemies with Zenyatta's right-click, battle mercying during ult to decimate enemy DPS players, insane tracking with Moira ult and getting a triple kill. These are all things every single support player should be looking to do, and these sorts of things will win you games if you can pull them off relatively consistently. If you're not pulling these things off, then those are mechanical flaws you need to work on. There are thousands of other little things you can or should be doing on supports, but those are just a small sample of the things that most low to mid tier players don't even try to do. 
The best players are those that can split their style and know when it's correct to fully support their team and when it's time to bring out the carry pants. If you really, really, really cannot tell what you're doing wrong, then watch some recordings of your games. I mean, VOD reviewing is always something I would highly recommend to anyone looking to improve in any video game, but sometimes you really need to see it to understand what you're doing wrong. Don't think, is this good enough to get me to platinum when you're watching VODs? You should be thinking, how close to the best humanly possible did I play that? If I'd have saved my sleep dart there, would I have survived their dive from Winston after? There is always something you could have done better. If you can't see it yourself, then send your VODs into a coach or someone whose opinion you trust to give you a reasonable analysis. I've looked over a few silver and below player games before in multiple games, and let me tell you, you might think you're doing good, but an outside perspective might really be what you need to shake up your brain and cause you to rethink some typical patterns you might have fallen into that could be hindering your gameplay. I know that nobody truly likes to accept when they play badly, and it does sting a little bit on the inside, but it's much better to accept your mistakes and improve rather than sit there going, woe is me and all support, ban anybody that backseat games my matches, I'm publicly streaming. Again, I just got sick of hearing so, so many streamers claiming that it wasn't their fault, claiming Mercy wasn't strong enough of a pick anymore, that supports have no impact in general, people are too toxic or feedy to climb with, yada yada. It's all a load of malarkey, and thousands of people on the ladder prove those statements wrong every day. I mean, if even I can climb on supports after not playing the game for an entire year, I'm sure you can too. Just stop blaming and try to have some bloody introspection, please? Either way, thanks for listening to my basically ramblings today, and I do truly hope that this helps someone at least question what they're being told and start looking for different ways to improve in-game. Streamers and content creators, stop peddling this nonsense and actually try and help everyone get better as a community.